brought us very excited to be part of uh, Generation Study Abroad, um, particularly the initiative that we have, uh, which is a minority serving institution student and professional initiative. Um, so we'll get into a little bit just as an overview of who Diversity Abroad is. Um, and why we chose this um, this particular initiative. Um, but first, as far as the, uh, the webinar goes, um, the goals of the webinar today is to, one, discuss Diversity Abroad's commitment to genera generation study abroad, um, review the program highlights, and then uh, also discuss opportunities for, for engagement. So um, as Lily mentioned myself, uh, Lily and our colleague Deidre will be participating in today's webinar. So first, a little bit about uh, diversity abroad. Uh, diversity abroad, uh, if you're not familiar with us, what we do uh, is we connect talented and diverse un and underrepresented students and graduates to internationally located and also internationally focused uh, study, intern, volunteer, degree, and career opportunities. And our ultimate goal is to better prepare these young people for leadership opportunities in an increasingly interconnected world. Um, through the Diversity Broad Network, which is our professional consortium, uh, as an organization, we advise and assist higher education institutions and international education organizations in uh, three main ways. One is in increasing access to international programs among U.S. students. Two is in implementing diversity and inclusive good practices into all aspects of international programming. Uh, and finally, the third is serving the unique needs of diverse uh, students, both um, inbound and outbound uh, students have with respect to um, educational opportunities. So we go on to the next slide. Um, so Generation Study Abroad uh, is something that um, I know many of you are familiar with, but just to, uh, an overview of, of what it is, a couple, three you know, quick points. Um, the initiative has been led by uh, IIE, the Institute for International Education, and the aim is doubling the number of students that are participating in study abroad by the year 2020. Um, now, the aspirational goal is to get the field of uh, higher education as a whole, in um, particular international education, um, motivated to expand access to international opportunities. And we know that there's such a small percentage of um, American students who decide to partic participate in education abroad. So. Uh, as a challenge, but one that's surmountable. Um, and the great thing about Generation Study Abroad is it's really open to anyone that is uh, working in international education and exchange. Um, so it's not limited, <coughs> excuse me, it's not limited just to institutions, but really anyone that's interested in uh, working uh, towards this towards this goal. Uh, and there's a, there's a, a quote on the side of the screen, or this other side of, the right side of the slide that you'll see. Um, that speaks about Generation Study Abroad um, and some of the commitment that I, IIE has made to it um, and is encouragement to get all of us on, on board with it. And we'll go on to the next slide. So again, my name is Deidre Ellis and I manage the student services for Diversity Abroad. Um, and so what I'll kind of overview is some of the, the initiatives that we have specifically for students um, in an effort to um, met, meet this goal of, of doubling the number of students who are studying abroad. And so what we hope to do is double our support as well. So in terms of campus outreach, we currently have what we call the Go Global, Camp, Go Global Campus Tour, where we reach 50 to anywhere from 50 to 70 institutions um, each year. And as as our commitment to Generation Study Abroad, we plan on um, increasing the number of HBCUs and minority serving institutions, um, including Hispanic serving institutions and tribal colleges that um, are a part of the Go Global Campus Tour. So last year, 2013-2014, we were able to visit um, 10 HBCUs. So this coming um, school year, we are planning on increasing that number significantly so that we are um, able to provide more information to more students across the country. So while we're on campus, we facilitate um, information sessions, classroom presentations, tabling, all in an effort to provide um, more support to um, very small study abroad offices that may or may not have the staff time or resources to be all around campus. So that's what we are able to assist with to, to set up um, presentations and to be visiting classes in case you're not able to, to take advantage of those opportunities. 
Additionally, we've recently launched our pre-departure online learning module, and we have included information about identity in, in the, the online learning module, and we are looking forward to having this pre-departure module um, accessible to all of our HBCU partners and minority-serving institution partners. Um, next, we will um, we are launching a brand new website, and we have career guides and as well as resume and cover letter tools. Where typically we're thinking, um, you know, this is what we provide to students after they return, but we also like to include some of this information in the planning process. So from the very beginning, making international education. Um, something that is aligned with the student's career goals in order to increase the relevance and that way increasing participation rates um, in international opportunities. Additionally, the Global Student Leadership Summit is a new initiative that is going to be um, part of our Diversity Abroad Annual Conference this year. The Global Student Leadership Summit is an opportunity for students who are at institutions across the, the country to be present and to be a part of the diversity of our conference. So not only are they alongside all of the professionals in the field, they also have the opportunity to, to attend student-focused workshops um, with some of our partners talking about career readiness, career planning, um, how to make the most of an international experience, what to do once you've gone abroad. And as part of our Generation Study Abroad initiative, we are planning to offer a discount to any student from a minority-serving institution who will be attending the Global Student Leadership Summit. And of course, you can visit um, our website to the, the diversitynetwork.org website to find more about the conference and the Global Student Leadership Summit. And lastly, we have um, scholarships that are available to all of our minority serving institution um, applicants. So students who may be participating um, in study abroad but are not sure how to meet that gap between the cost of the program and what they have currently, we encourage students from minority serving institutions to apply because they are considered um, part of the diverse group of students that we'd like to send abroad in, and that is an increased, um, they get an increased chance to, to be selected for these scholarships just because they are, are participating from minority serving institutions. So we hope that with all of the various student initiatives that we have going on that we can provide the much needed support um, to assist getting the students informed and aware and engaged with international opportunities. So I'll pass it on to Lily who will share about our professional services as it relates to Generation Study Abroad. Lily? Excellent. Thank you, Deidre. Um, as you can tell, we're pretty excited about the student initiative. We think that it's uh, something that will um, not only help contribute to the overall goal of Generation Study Abroad, but really make sure that the diversity aspect of, of the students who are participating in, in study abroad are um, reflective of the diverse groups of, of students that we serve on a day-to-day -day basis on our campuses. Um, it, as Deidre mentioned, I am Lily Lopez McGee, and I help manage the our diversity network member consortium. And um, as uh, the second prong to our approach to our Generation Study Abroad commitment, um, we're really looking at developing and building capacity on our minority-serving institution campus uh, partners. And uh, part of how we're hoping to do this is to essentially set up. Um, a, a program that brings together an annual cohort of professionals from minority serving institution campuses. Um, we're hoping to bring together anywhere from seven to 10 representatives um, from each of those um, campuses to develop uh, a, a sense of, develop a sense of community among um, MSIs uh, to know that there are many people in the field who are um, going through uh, different types of challenges, and also experiencing some, some great successes on their campus. Um, and developing that community is really important to uh, making sure that we are all sharing in our, our advancements in, in making study abroad more accessible to students. Um, so with this annual cohort of, of seven to 10 folks, what we're hoping to do is to provide in-person as well as virtual training 
um, on topics that are relevant to specific topics that are relevant to uh, minority serving institution campuses. Some of the topics that we're looking to cover will include um, how to develop um, successful faculty led programs, um, develop creative financing options for education abroad programming on your campus, uh, developing a uh, student advising, mo uh, better student advising uh, tips, building support on your campus for internationalization efforts, and developing cross institution partnerships um, with other institution, perhaps in your area or across the country, who are doing things um, that uh, that would benefit your your campus institution. Um, so, as I mentioned, we we will also be doing web based trainings. We're hoping to do one in person training um, that will essentially bring together all of the cohort members. Um, in one space so that we're ha we have an opportunity to connect and meet with one another in person. Um, and then the web-based trainings will, will complement that in-person training by giving us touch points um, to connect with one another. Um, in addition to, to the trainings um, that we'll, we will actually be doing in partnership with our Diverse Senior Network member institutions, um, we'll also be highlighting the successes that are happening on the campuses um, for the, for the representatives who will be joining the the uh, the program. And what that looks like is essentially um, developing an, an online uh, space for our MSI campuses to share the, the good and helpful practices that are going on on their campuses, not only to focus on the challenges, but then also to focus on the successes um, and and provide a space for others to see how how uh, success happen ha can happen on different campuses. Um, so just jumping back to the um, to the trainings, I wanted to highlight the fact that we will also um, be bringing in people from our member institutions to help facilitate these trainings. Um, folks who have been able to develop these uh, really uh, uh, good models for faculty led programs and some of the other topics uh, that we discussed. Um, the, the participation announcement or the announcement call for participation uh, will be coming out in the um, in next week at the beginning of December. Um, so we will definitely encourage you to, to keep an eye out for that. Um, so I, I just mentioned the, the participation for um, the capacity building program. Um, more information will be available on the Diversity Network website uh, for how you can access that. Um, and we will be um, looking to, again, uh, bring in seven to 10 individual representatives from uh, minority serving institution campuses. Um, so we would encourage you to to get involved and active in that in that regard. We would also encourage you to reach out to Deidre, who spoke earlier on the student initiatives uh, to coordinate campus visits. Um, we are constantly looking for um, in a, ways to partner with our institutions to bring um, more resources to campus. So if you are interested in um, in a campus visit uh, and haven't heard from us yet, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, another way to get involved is that there will be a, a program, a one day workshop ca called the Foundation for Campus Internationalization at HBCU. So if you are re uh, representing an HBCU, um, there will be an event held right before the Diversity Abroad Campus Conference, excuse me, on March 21st in New Orleans. And um, more, we will send out a flyer with additional information about that where um, you can contact Tori and Lee at Xavier University who is helping manage and facilitate that. We would also encourage you, as Deidre mentioned, um, to nominate a student to attend the Global Student Leadership Summit. Um, we are hoping to engage anywhere from 20 to 30 students this year in the inaugural uh, Student Leadership Summit and we would love to see uh, minority, students from minority serving in institutions represented in that cohort of students. Um, more information about the, the Student Leadership Summit can be found on our website, and we will um, be sure to follow up with a note um, with all of the links to, to where you can find this information following the webinar. Um, the, the last thing that we wanted to emphasize is that the Generation Study Abroad initiative is open to institutions and organizations across the, the United States who are working in international education and exchange. So if you haven't submitted um, a, a letter of commitment, we would certainly encourage you to do that as well. So with that, um, we wanted to remind you that um, we are open and available to, to speak 
uh, individually with you all. Uh, you can contact us via email by contacting us at these email addresses here. We're also on Twitter and uh, Facebook. If you use these handles, uh, you'll find that we post a lot of the information about um, how to access the information and resources um, on, our, on our Twitter feeds as well. Um, and the, the last way that um, we would encourage you to stay connected is to register or subscribe to the Diversity and International Education Exchange listserv um, by shooting us an email at members at diversitynetwork.org um, as a way to engage in a community of, of, um, of conversation and dialogue among others who are interested in diversity and inclusion practices in international education and exchange. Um, uh, one last note, uh, we are also, I, I forgot to mention this in the, um, in, in the capacity building program, we are also hosting a minority serving institution roundtable discussion during our diversity abroad conference on Monday, March 23rd. Um, and we'll, as I mentioned, we'll send out a link to how you can access the information about um, each of those activities uh, so that you have those in your inbox after we talk, uh, after we're finished with today's discussion. So with that, um, before we end, we did want to leave some space for questions and um, discussion. If you have any questions, you, we'll give you a few minutes uh, to, to type those in into the question box that you see in your dashboard for GoTo meeting. Um, and if you're not seeing that, please let us know so that we can give you access to that. So we'll give folks a, a couple of minutes just to, to chat in their questions. And if we don't have any, we uh, will uh, move forward with, with contacting you via email following this presentation. And I would like to uh, just thank Deidre and uh, Andrew today for the overview. Um, we as a team are, are definitely excited about moving forward with this, this initiative and definitely look forward to uh, working more closely with all of those who are connected here on the webinar. We haven't received any questions yet, but you have our contact information here. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and uh, Ask Deidre and Andrew if you have any additional comments or um, information that you'd like to share. This is Deidre. Um, with the Student Services Initiative, I did want to say that our we, we definitely want you to have us on campus. Um, if there are specific opportunities, events um, that you have going on that don't match our regular campus profile, please don't feel that you're limited to only doing class presentations um, and or um, information sessions. If there is something unique that you have in mind or that's something that fits your campus, we're definitely open and flexible um, because we know each campus is different. So if there are ideas that you have in mind, that would make um, a Go Global Campus tour visit or this initiative, the Generation Study Abroad commitment in general, more success, successful at your particular campus, don't hesitate to let me know um, and we can make sure that we create something unique that is going to work for you and your campus. So I think that's it for me, Lily. And uh, thanks, Deidre and, and Lily. Um, and all of you for attending. Um, as Lily mentioned, we're, uh, we're really excited about this, um, this initiative. Um, for diversity abroad, we um, we're here to serve uh, the needs of campuses and the, the needs of the students that are on campuses. So, um, as was all as was already mentioned, if uh, you have ideas of uh, ways that we can work um, more collaboratively with you with this specific initiative or with other initiatives, um, please feel free to reach out to to any of us, um, and we'd be happy to discuss. The, you know, creative ideas or how we can work better with, with your campuses or organizations um, and, and ultimately serve um, a, a broader population of students with respect to, to international programming. So thank all of you for, for attending to the work you do and um, your commitment to diversity and inclusion within uh, international education. Excellent. And we did just get a note um, from Torian, who is on the on the call with us, that there is a, a link to the registration uh, to register for that event taking place on March 21st, and we'll be sure to send that out uh, to you uh, after this this webinar. So again, thank you for your time, and that concludes today's webinar, and we look forward to.